Welcome back to The Breakfast. And uh, just before our final conversation, we're moving into talking now about something called Nigerian Eagle. Uh, Amcon, of course, they released a statement saying that they were pulling together their resources from ARIC and Aero contractors, and they were going to be setting up an international airline called the Nigerian Eagle. Uh, of course, the projections are that it would kick off sometime in June, in June 2021. Yes. And so we've uh, invited this morning to speak with us, Dr. Austin Nanyogo, mm -hmm. um, a fellow of uh, Chartered Accountant of Nigeria, and of course, uh, Mr. James Durojai, a lawyer, uh, to speak with us and uh, share this conversation with us. Uh, good morning, Mr. Nanyogo. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Uh, morning. Morning. Great to have you. Uh, James Durojai, can you hear us clearly? All right, we still have uh, issues with uh, speaking with Mr. Durojai. So let's start with uh, Dr. Anyogo this morning. Uh, I, I want to, first of all, you know, for those who are not, uh, um, you know, very clear on this, share with us what the laws are concerning Amcon and its uh, powers to repossess assets and properties of debtors. And, um, you know, what, if, what it's allowed to do with those properties after repossessing them. Okay, um, thank you, um, Good morning, viewers, and um, good morning, Nigerians. Yes, the various um, amendments of the AMCOM Act have actually given AMCOM power. But what AMCOM actually brought from the inception is the assets. It's actually the assets of these organizations. You know, so AMCOM is empowered to recover all the food based on the exposure of those organizations through their assets. You know, it simply means that there were actually a partial transfer of ownership of those um, organizations to um, to Amcom. So Amcom has uh, every right, you know, uh, uh, the act backing it to possess uh, access of um, early companies or companies that are owing Nigerians or owing Amcom, so to say. So the law permits Am Amcom to to acquire those, because initially those are the things that Amcom actually acquired. It's in the strength of those assets that Amcom were able to buy up those loans from the banks and said, okay, fine, we'll try to continue to uh, make effort to recover these funds. And the reliable source of recovering these funds are actually from the, uh, the possessions of these um, uh, companies, which are, which, which it's actually the assets, you know. So Amcon has every right to, after most uh, uh, due diligence, and also looking at the backing of the law, um, going to court, asking you to come, and all that, making all moves, all recovery moves. So Amcon has every right to. Okay. All right. Prime Minister if we accept that uh, Amcon has the legal powers to, you know, do what it will, since it owns the controlling shares of both ARIC and Aero contractors, you know, to recover its multi-billion Naira debts, it's not the first time Nigeria has tried to form its own, you know, a different national carrier. And we're seeing what it's trying to do here, pulling resources from both ARIC and Aero to form what it's called in the Nigerian eagle. How do you see this going? Sorry, I, I, I didn't get your question. I'm trying to get your assessment. You Mr. Anyogo, can you hear me now? Let me try my earpiece. I couldn't hear you. Okay. So let's, uh, let's have Mr. Anyogo fix that in. Let's see if we can get better audio from him. And uh, Mr. Durojaye, do we have you on now? Yes, I'm home now. Fantastic, now. fantastic. Yes, we oh. now have both Mr. Anyogu and Mr. Durojai. Mr. Anyogu, we'll come to you in a minute. Let's uh, let's bring you in talking about... Uh, oh, sorry, do you want to get this one? Um, so, uh, Mr. Durojai, let's start with you. Uh, um, uh, apologies for the you know sound quality. Durojai, if you can hear us, I, I, I want you to share your thoughts. Uh, you, you mentioned something, and I, it's a conversation that I saw you in yesterday on social media, you mentioned, you know, you know, some things that show that you may not be very excited about the move by Amcon. It feels like they're taking advantage of these airlines. I, I want your quick thoughts on, th uh, on that. Uh, what are your thoughts basically on um, the move by Amcon and how it affects ARIC and Aero contractors? The issue I see about the, the idea of Amcon taking over the airplanes belonging to Arik and Aero is that it's going to create some legal issues. 
between the airline owners, both Eric and Eru, and Amcon itself. The Amcon, the, the original owners of the airlines will not agree to Amcon selling, using their planes to float a new airline. And another issue, again, that one we have to look at is whether Amcon has the powers to form a new company out of a out of two debt reading airline. So that's another issue that that's from a legal point of view. It's going to raise an issue and it's going to be a subject of litigation based on what is going well, on. Well, I think we already well, I yeah, we already established that Amcon does have that power um, to repossess, you know, the assets of those airlines and, you know, most likely do what it wants with them. But I, I, I want you to share on, you know, the reason that those airlines ran into debt in the first place and, you know, struggled before, of course, Amcon, did, you know, bailed them out. Um, do you think that the Nigerian aviation sector in general, you know, has, you know, st struggles that may, they may not be able to get over? Uh, yes, I think the prof. Let me start with Arik for ex for example. Arik had a good start in two thousand and six. They started with about three planes, then they grew to about um, thirty planes, operating long all routes to London, U New York, and then Johannesburg. I think the major problem what led to Arik's current situation before Amcon took over is mismanagement. As you know, most Nigerian airline operators are, have limited knowledge about the aviation business. The, the airline business basically, it generates a lot of cash flow, but the profit margin, when you factor in the maintenance cost of, for aircraft, for pilot training, and other service agreements with the service provider. Then you pay the taxes and meet your bank. You discover that you make little or no profit. So the money, the profit, the revenues the airlines make, the airline make, are diverted to personal use, maybe to fund other businesses. So as, as, and as such, the, since the money are diverted to other ventures or that for personal use the airline will not be able to have money to okay. maintain their place right. or service their debt so okay so mr Dura, Jerry, you, are, you are alleging mismanagement here that that's that may be one of the reasons why they're in this debts in the first place let's now bring in mr yes. anyogu uh, to to our earlier question i was saying it's not the first time that the government is trying to make a move like this to, you know, start an airline. We saw how that yes. eventually Nigeria, happened. Yeah. Yes, exactly. But now they're seeing an opportunity here to recover their debts. They're saying, Amcon, Eric, let's pull resources together. Let's start Nigerian Eagle. What hopes do you have for this new carrier that may, you know, eventually come to light? Well, I, it's actually a good move. Um, it, it's actually a good move because um, we, we don't even have a national carrier as a country. Um, like, uh, like we all remember, the 4.4 billion that is outstanding in Amcom's uh, position is actually an entire company. Uh, the only worries I have is professionalism. You know, uh, there, there, there are a couple of uh, businesses that the Nigerian government have tried to go into, uh, and they have never really run those businesses well. Uh, we, we've seen the situations where there are privatization here and there. And like I normally say, the government has no business in business. So uh, it's a good move, but it depends on the structure. Are they going to be inviting professionals to run these um, airlines? I mean, uh, uh, the, the, the airline that we floated, are they going to have a, a, a standing uh, MOU with an uh, international representative organization? Or, or are they still going to use the staff of Aero and um, ARIC, who uh, uh, Mr. James highlighted about mismanagement and um, dominion? So is the structure 
the floating that really matters actually because okay. if, 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 the, those airlines actually belong to Nigerians because we ample have all the assets of those companies, you know. So and then the only problem we may have is that if the ten airlines they are planning to if the ten airlines they are planning to use is actually own Sadly, we've, uh, right, the, the audio there like isn't, isn't so great. We we'll apologize for that. Mr. Ayogu and uh, uh, Mr. Durujai, thank you very much for your time. We we'll apologize, you know, how the audio on the network went on. But it's just, uh, it's just so sad. Oh, do we still have you there? I think we're All right, done. unfortunately. It's just sad what's happening. I mean, let's even look at Africa, not even, you know, the rest of the world where for example ethiopia where we see that tourism the aviation sector is like a mainstay of the economy it's so sad how it's a different ballgame here in nigeria and how airline companies are basically collapsing under the weight of debt uh, i don't know how amcon how uh arik and arrow are going to react to this right now they've not said anything but uh definitely trust us to bring you the updates the, right here on plus tv africa the mis mismanagement you know and the you know the effects of of bad governance affects every everything it doesn't it's not you know, limited to just education or to just infrastructure. Mm -hmm. It goes everywhere. It affects private businesses and public businesses. It affects the aviation sector, affects the health, affects education, everything. So everybody will, you know, at some point suffer, um, you know, the effects of, of bad governance. You know, sure. aviation, of course, will share their stories. I saw someone post a video of what, you know, losing a twin baby is in the hospital yesterday. And it's a really, really sad one. Mm. But we, we unfortunately don't have time for all of that this morning. We apologize for the poor sound quality in that interview. Thanks to Austin Ayogo and James Durujai for stopping by. Uh, Plus Training comes up next. Uh, we have Bookie November joining us to share her thoughts uh, with us on what's going on across the country. Good morning.